Rotten Butcher from Cromlech. That's one of the bigger figures, so he's a bit of a giant. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and today I'm going to be looking at something quite interesting, and it's from this crowd here. This is Cromlech, and Cromlech is a Polish company that uh, creates quite a lot of uh, figurines, accessories for figurines, also scenery, and other accessories for gaming. But with gaming, it's not always just about playing the game, it's also having figures and other such. And some people don't even play at all and just do figures. So this is the, what are they calling again? Here's the Rotten Butcher of the Demon of Plague. So it sounds pretty gruesome, doesn't it? Maybe a bit hard for you to see there. So let's go to the overhead and you'll be able to see some of the, the details. So this guy is actually pretty chunky. Most gaming type figures are 28 mil, which would be about this sort of height. So he's a bit of a giant. Comes a cast in some very nice, it's a very durable style resin. It actually has a little bit of give to it, even though now it feels like your traditional stiff resins. It does have more of a plasticky type of feel. It's a bit softer, which is a good thing because if you do end up uh, playing with these and you do handle them, having toughness is good. All right, so we've got a couple of arm sections as well. They're all cast in resin. Got the hands, they're cast around the handle for this big, massive, rotten, broken, chunky head cutting axe. All right, let's have a closer look at some of these bits and the impressions that we, we get. Let's just move this out of the way. All right, so there's a the frontal view. You can see this fellow's got a, a pretty ugly looking head. He's got all his lips hanging off. Full jaw is showing. Open up stomach with all his entrails and bits and pieces all hanging out. So you'll be able to make this really gruesome, really red, blood red. It's got all his armor, which is damaged. It's got really massive damage marks. Lots of character on there. And also the skin detail too, all stretched skin. You got all these little pock marks and lesions. Just really gross. And it's stuff that we like, isn't it? Got some little skulls hanging off his uh, his little loincloth there. A little bit of chainmail as well, with the chainmail detail. And you got these big sores. Big cut mark across the back. Really full of character. And the amazing thing too is, these particular pieces are cast incredibly clean. Like, I can't see any flash across the main sections. And there is just a, a minute join line across the bottom. Okay, which means this would have been pretty much a one piece mold. It would have been put into the mold like this. You can see the, the cast pouring points here. And then it would have been split across the bottom and pulled out in one piece, which that's the only way you can get all these undercuts to have this sort of detail. Now with the pour marks, you see that they're really glossy. So that's the natural finish of after it's been poured. You just need to trim those off just a little bit to have them uh, standing flat. Although at the moment, because it's been poured straight, he is standing flat. You also get a laser cut base. Nice big base too, because he's a big figure. And you can see there, it just sits like that. Of course, you can build whatever base you like, but it's nice, every figure come with a base is good. Okay, so when you, you take it gaming, you can just push him around on the board. Or even if you're just putting on a display, it's nice to have some ground material on that too. So a little bit of grass or such, just to make it more realistic. Okay, so that's the main component there. Got our arms, our arm sections, and then you've got the hands that join it all together. So let me go, I've got a little bit of, just some putty stuff here, just to do the dry assembly, just to show you what it's gonna look like. Let me just push this in here and we'll squeeze them together. All right, so the fit's quite nice. Actually, I should have shown you before I put it in there. The locating lugs are square. So they only go in a couple of different directions. So you don't have to worry about alignment as such. And also you don't have to worry so much about pinning the join with uh, brass pins. Quite often to get extra strength, you uh, drill through both sides and put the brass pins in. You can still do that with this in case you really want to make it tough. But with the locators there, it's going to add quite a lot of strength already. 
so it's not absolutely necessary. And also you can see the, the square locators on the ends there too. So you can work out quite easily how to put the hands in place. So let's just do this and get this over here. Okay, so because I've got the putty in there, you'll see a little bit of a gap. Once you glue it together, there'll be a slight gap that you just need the smallest amount of putty to fill. And you just use uh, super glue for these. So if you haven't done any resin models before, you just need to get yourself some really good super glue or CA or otherwise known as full name, cyanoacrylate. So this is a Zapigap Green. It's a medium consistency, which I think works for most things because there's a slight gap filling ability. And with resin, you normally do get a little bit of a gap, so it helps to fill that in. All right, so you get yourself some of that. All right, let's just align these hands together. So this hand's got the hole in it, and this hand's got the extension of the handle. So obviously this part is gonna take the blade. I'm not gonna pull this off. This is the original molding uh, of the blade. It still has its support materials here. So basically it would have been poured like this. So the resin would have been poured this way. And this is to allow all the air bubbles to escape. So you just need to trim along these lines, across here, 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 and across there. And then that would fit, so this round part here will fit in this hole there. So just like that. Now again, it's got the locator there, so it's not absolutely necessary to put a pin in it. But anything this long, I tend to like pinning anyway, because at the moment, this locator has about five mil of material to locate it. If you drill through here, say a centimetre and another centimetre here, you have two centimetres of wire, which would totally hold that in place and they'll never break off. Okay, so let's see how this fits together here. All right, so you've got your squares that match up, like that. Let's get a little bit of putty just to hold it in place. It'll be easier for you to see. So it's probably pretty easy to see there that you've got the square locators. All right, so this just fits in there. It goes in there. Squeeze them together. And here we go. We've got our, what do they call them again? Rotten butcher. So hence, oops, that's what happens when you've got uh, low-tech putty. Alright, let's just push him back. So Mr. Rotten Butcher, just like so. And then if you can imagine with the blade, the blade's gonna sit, let's see, probably like, like this. Now it is rounded here, so you can change the angle of the blade, depending on how you like it. You just have to pretend, if you are holding the weapon, the orientation of your particular hands. So, it could be like this as well. Either way, just get the, lo the look the way you like it. Even like that, it looks pretty good. All right, so let's just do a quick spin. You can see all the details of the Rotten Butcher and his big chunky arms, all his muscles, all the sores. You can just imagine the pus, the bile, the blood, all that sort of gruesome stuff just coming out. Oh, it's gonna fall apart now because of the amounts of putty I've used. But that gives you a good idea of what he's gonna look like. And it probably, you can see, actually let's pull this putty out of the way. If I pull this putty out of the way and you see how it fits, you see there's a very, very small gap. And that's very easily fixed uh, and filled just with a little bit of putty. A little bit of a mold line here. So you just need to scrape that back a bit. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't even bother with that. They'll just leave it the way it is. And he's got his big guts opened up there. So there you go, so that is the Rotten Butcher. There he is there. Rotten Butcher from Cromlech. That's one of their bigger figures. So there's quite a lot of uh, 28 mil figures as well. And also all the laser cut scenery. So I hope you enjoyed that. I quite like looking at this pretty yucky looking dude and uh, I hope you enjoy some of their figures as well so over time we'll be showing you some more but in the meantime here's a big chunky one thanks for watching